In this topic, we are going to discuss about the heat budget of the earth. There is a balance between the incoming solar radiation and the outgoing radiation from the earth, whether in the form of terrestrial radiation or the amount of uh, heat and energy that is reflected back without heating the atmosphere or the earth's surface. Actually, the total amount of heat that is received by the earth at the outer layer of the atmosphere that is completely returned back to the outer, outer space. So the net heat of the earth remains the same. There is a balance between the net heat received by the earth and the heat and, en and energy radiated back to the outer space. The source of heat for the earth is the sun. The heat and energy that comes to the earth from the sun comes in short waves and is called incoming solar radiation or insulation. This short waves is not able to heat the atmospheric gases as the atmospheric gases cannot absorb the short waves of the insulation. So the insulation which is in the short waves are not able to heat the atmospheric gases as the atmosphere is more or less transparent to the incoming solar radiation. The earth's surface gets heated by the insulation and starts radiating it back to the atmosphere and to the space in long waves which is called terrestrial radiation or the earth's radiation and that is absorbed by the atmospheric gases in larger volume. This terrestrial radiation is absorbed by the atmospheric gases and is subsequently returned back to the space. So the earth as a whole does not accumulate or lose heat. It maintains its temperature, that is, it neither becomes hot nor it cools down. The temperature of the earth neither increases nor decreases. It remains static. It remains the same because the net heat received by the earth and the atmosphere that is completely returned back to the outer space. The amount of heat and energy received by the earth from the sun is ultimately returned back to the space in different ways. So there is no net increase or decrease in the earth's temperature. This balance that exists in the incoming solar radiation and outgoing terrestrial radiation of the earth is called the heat budget of the earth. If we consider the insulation received at the top of the atmosphere as 100% or 100 units, while passing through the atmosphere, some amount of the energy of the insulation is reflected or is scattered and may be absorbed by the atmosphere. So, only it is the remaining part of the insulation that reaches the Earth's surface that heats it. So the insulation mainly heats the earth's surface and the atmosphere is more or less transparent to the incoming solar radiation. Out of the total insulation reaching the outer limit of the atmosphere, roughly about 35 units of the insulation are reflected back to the space even before reaching the earth's surface. It may be reflected by the clouds or refracted by the solid particles present in the atmosphere and it is about 35 units of uh, the heat and energy coming from the sun towards the earth is returned back to the space without heating 
either the atmosphere or the surface. So the remaining amount of uh, the insulation, that is 65 units, that comes into the atmosphere, heats a part of it, and majority of the insulation, of that insulation, is received by the surface and it heats it. The reflected amount of incoming solar radiation is called the albedo of the earth. As I told you, the remaining 65 units are absorbed by the atmosphere and by the earth's surface. Out of that, 14 units of the 65 units of the insulation is absorbed by the solid and liquid particles present in the atmosphere as the short waves of the insulation can be absorbed by the solid and liquid particles. So the remaining 51 units reach to the earth's surface and is absorbed by the earth's surface and heats it. So out of the total insulation, 51% of the absorbed is absorbed by the earth's surface and only 14% of the insulation is absorbed by the atmosphere. It is because of this that it is said that the atmosphere is almost transparent to the incoming solar radiation. Now the earth radiates back 51 units of the insulation received by the earth's surface in the form of terrestrial radiation. So of that 51 units of the terrestrial radiation, 17 units of it is radiated to the space directly without heating the atmosphere. So only the remaining 34 units are absorbed by the atmosphere. In total, 48 units are absorbed by the atmosphere. 14 units of the incoming solar radiation and 34 units of the terrestrial radiation of the Earth of the earth. Finally, the total amount of the heat received by the atmosphere is re-radiated back into the space. Thus, the total radiation returning from the earth and the atmosphere respectively is 17 units of the terrestrial radiation and 48 units from the atmosphere, which equals to 65 units and which balance the total of 65 units received from the sun. The other 35 units have already been returned back to the space without even heating the atmosphere or coming to the earth's surface. So 65 units that is that comes to the earth's surface and heats the atmosphere and the earth's surface that is ultimately returned back to the outer space added with the 35 units of the insulation which has already been returned back to the space without coming, without heating the atmosphere or the earth's surface. So it makes 200 units or the 100% of the insulation. So in this way we, we see that out of the total insulation that reaches the earth's surface, the whole of uh, the energy and heat that comes to the earth or enters the atmosphere that is ultimately returned back to the space. So there is a balance between the heat received by the earth and that is returned back to the outer space. So the temperature of the earth neither increases nor decreases. It remains the same. It remains static. So there is a balance between the incoming solar radiation and outgoing radiation. And this is maintained uh, by the incoming and the outgoing radiation from the earth. This is called the heat balance of the earth or the heat budget of the earth.